Hello React Native developers, what is going on? This episode is going to be quite a ride, so strap on and welcome to Can It Be Done in React Native? This week, we make it rain. Hello guys, I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. Last week I saw this Medium story that really caught my attention. It's about the Monzo card selection. And it's written by the developer himself, Etol Munim. And there are a couple of things that really caught my attention. So first of all, these neo banks like Revolut or Monzo are really interesting to us because they work very hard to provide delightful user experiences to their users. It makes sense for their uh, business proposition, but it also makes sense for us to study them and see how we could do it in React Native. And the thing that really got me thinking when I saw the story is how you see the, you have these cards which can fly from the bottom or the middle of the stack and they land on top of the stack. And I was like, how can we land the card on top of the stack? I was thinking, can we animate on Z index for iOS or elevation for Android? I was not sure this was possible while reading the story. And I was like, oh, but if we can't do this, we can still play a trick where we would have like a hidden card. And once the cards fly, um, flies out in the middle, we can set the opacity to zero, set the opacity to one to the other card, make it land on top of the stack. So to the user, it looks like there were only one card which was animated, but in fact, we animated two cards. We used this trick in a previous video, the Spotify example, where we have, it looks to the user as if there is only a single button that smoothly scrolls through the page, but actually there are two buttons and we, we play with the opacity of each one. Fortunately, we don't have to play such trick because we can uh, smoothly animate on the Z index and elevation properties. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate because that would have been a cool trick to build. But I think in this example, we we have enough to shoe on and there is enough for us to digest that we don't need to play extra tricks. So we can do it uh, plain and simple. That's going to be fine, I think. So yeah, how would we do this in React Native? So I see three animations. So the first animation, you see it here on the left. It's this find out, finding out of the cards. So we have some um, translation. So we, the rotation axis is translated to the weave of the card. So we do, we translate minus uh, weave of the card. We do the rotate, let's say to minus 15, 15 degrees, and then uh, rotate, uh, translate back to the weave of the card. And then on the right side, we have two animations. So the first one is when no cards has been selected yet and we go from the fan out position to regrouping the cards together and then we have the card flying out animation the third animation so we select the card we translate the card in uh, vertically we rotate the card on its uh, center and once the card is in the middle so meaning out of the stack so in the middle of the animation i, me I meant sorry we increment its index, so when it translates back to its original position, it will appear on top of the stack. And <laughs> how far do we need to translate the card so it appears uh, outside the stack? So the cards are translated, you see, from let's say 8 degrees, may, uh, and then the card rotates, so in the middle of the animation, it's rotated to 45 degrees, so it goes from 0 to 45, and then from 45 to 0. Um, we would use trigonometry, of course, right, to calculate all the distances with the tilted cards. Uh, you are lucky, I'm going to spare you the trigonometry example this time, but I will link to an example video that shows how uh, we can use trigonometry to calculate such distance. And so these are for the animations. So when we tap on the button, we set the animation value to the index card, but we can also, uh, we need also to store the selected card into the state 
of the component, right? Because then we, we might navigate to another screen and we need to pass the state as parameter. And if we store the selected card in the state, we can also maybe use the new transition API from reanimated to um, have a smooth animation on the checked on the check mark so it doesn't appear so so abruptly. And even if it's like only a few frames, you know, it's just it's gonna feel much better than just like blandly, you know, display the check mark where where it needs to to appear. And it's uh, also a good way for us to to play with this new API. And also putting things in the state, it's a good way for us to play with the new React Native hooks, which are available in Expo 43. So yeah, lots lots uh, for us to to play with hooks, transition API, and then uh, some uh, plain old honest uh, reanimated functions to to implement the free animations I, I just described. But what do you guys think? Can it be done in React Native? Let's have a look. But before we get started, two things. First, if you like these videos and you would like to support the show, you can buy me a coffee. I will give you access to the private GitHub repository where I tinker with all these examples, as well as uh, exclusive content. And if you have a new React uh, Native project coming up, I recommend you check out React Native Elements Premium Starter Kit for React Native uh, on iOS and Android. Lots of uh, beautiful uh, UI components and uh, boilerplate code. We just updated it to Expo 33. It's 80% of what you need when starting a new React Native project. So I recommend you check it out. Links are in the video description. All right, guys, let's get started. Here I created a boilerplate project using Expo init with the new uh, TypeScript template. You can download the boilerplate link is in the video description in case you want to follow along this example. So I have these beautiful um, design cards which I bought for uh, 16 bucks on, on Creative Market. And so here I have the card data and I pass it to the card selection um, component. So here we display the card component which is simply uh, an image with some styling. So we had like the border radius, for instance. And then we have the selection. So for each card, we have a button from React Native Gesture Handler. And we display the information and we have the check mark for each button. So we have um, three animations. So the first is going to be to fan out the cards then we need to if no cards as if it's when we select a card and it's the first selection we need to regroup the cards and the third animation is to do the actual card selection and then we need at the end we're gonna um, once these animations are built we're gonna also um, set the selected card in, uh, index into the state of the component and we're gonna use it also to do the transition on the check mark and I think we can get started by building the first animation is when the component is mounted, we found out the cards. So we are going to need a couple of animation values. So the first one is going to be the selected card animation value. So simply the animation value that contains the index of the card that is selected. And we start at minus one. No card is, is selected. And we need for each card to associate a rotation value. So each card has a different rotate uh, Z value. So we can create an animation value called uh, card rotations. And so for each cards, we create a new animation value. So let me aim to do a couple of imports here. So I need animated from React Native Reanimated. Oh, 
and we're gonna use use code from reanimated to declare our animations so use code the dependency is on the card uh, card cards variable so the animation the animations we are going to define in use code depend on the values of cards and here we're going to use a block and we're going to use so a block each uh, a block that contains a, uh, one animation node for each animation we, we want to declare and we want to declare three animations and so the first one is when the condition so the selected card index is the initial index we need to find out the cards and so i'm gonna so here we're gonna use uh, we're gonna run a lot of timing animations so i'm gonna uh, declare so we need a clock and we need uh, an animation value for that which i'm gonna call uh, animation and i'm gonna create a shortcut function because we're gonna use this timing function so many times i'm gonna use a, uh, a shortcut function so it's uh, easier to less verbose to declare in the use code function so i'm gonna call it timing and pass the animation value as well as the clock as parameter and so i can declare this function so we have animation which is an animated value and a clock which is an animated clock and so every time we're gonna run we're gonna assign to the animation value a run timing function from redash so we pass the clock we go from zero to one duration this we can play with but let's do three 400 milliseconds for now and easing easing linear so it's a wrong easing function here run timings come from redash we need to import the clock and also so com equal so we run the timing function and then we need to set the rotation values so we have card rotations so the one which has at the back we can rotate so be interpolate is a shortcut function when the animation value goes from only from zero to one so we go from zero to one we go to from zero to let's say 15 degrees let's try that and for the last card we go from zero to minus 15 and i need to import the set function as well let's have a look and we need of course now to set the animation values so here i have a view that traps the card with an absolute fill object because each card is uh, overlaid on top of the other so I'm gonna use animated view here and we have a rotate Z value which comes from card rotations at index and we need to do a concat because this is just the numerical value so we can add we need to add degrees and import concat 
we need to set the transform here, but we also need to uh, transform the origin of the rotate. So we're going to do a so we're going to translate by minus minus the width of the card, rotate, and then translate back to the width of the card. We need, because the other ro card rotations will be done at the center and not, uh, we will be done at the center of the card, we need also to animate, uh, to have an animation value for the origin transform because we need to switch the origin transform to zero for other uh, animations. So I'm going to create an animation value called translate x, which is going to be the, the one which is going to drive the origin change of the rotation. So I'm going to set, set it to card width. So here we have translate x, sorry. So is minus multiply minus translate x. And then, so this is our origin chain, right? And so now I can add rotate z here. Perfect, I need to import multiply. So this is how we, we, we switch the origin of the rotation. We translate x and then translate back. So you see, boom, the fan out looks good. Uh, actually, no, it's minus 15 here and 15 here. All right, perfect. Now we can do, so here when we press, so we can set the animation value for selected card. So we have this function selected card, which gets an index as parameter. And then we're gonna do select card set value of index. So now we're going to select a card. If it's the first time we select a card, we need to do the second animation, which is going to be to group the cards back together. So we need to create a new animation value to say if this uh, anim if the card, uh, it's the first time a card has been selected because that's the only time we're going to play this uh, grouping animation. Um, so we can create is first card selected and we create an animation value. So now let's do our second animation. So it's when the card, the selected card is not equal to the initial index. So a card has been selected. And I need to import so a card has been selected and it's the first time a card has been selected. So is first card selected? Oh, I can set it to one. No, let's, uh, so, and first card selected. Or oh, let's rename it to, um, is grouping animation done. So, and grouping animation has not been done. That's more explicit. Perfect. Okay, we run again timing function. 
and we also rotate we need to set the translate x to zero so we go from translate x to zero and for the first the first and second card we animate from the original value to uh, yeah minus 15 divided by 2 15 divided by 2 let's have a look do I have And when we finish the animation, clock is not running anymore. We know that this animation is done, so we do set is grouping animation done to true. Uh, and that's the condition. Let's have a look. Okay, now if I tap, it fans out properly, but I need so this I need also to set the one on top to zero. I tap, perfect. Okay, so now we need to do the our third animation. And so our third animation, so we're gonna have one animation node for each card, for each uh, index selection. So if the, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna create an array of animation node, one per card. And so we are gonna spread it into this block. So that's why I'm doing a map of card index and we know it's a condition where uh, so it's an end condition so in index so selected card index equals at index and the grouping animation is done So here we have uh, we're gonna have our animation block, up, and um, so the first thing again is gonna we're gonna run a timing function again, and the first thing we are gonna do is uh, set maybe the translation of the cards so we are going to associate a translate y value for each uh, card so let me uh, so here we have card rotations so we're going to do card translations card translations so we have a translate y value So we can set the card translation at index and we interpolate it on the um, animation values. But here we're going to use a regular interpolate because it's a bit more complex. So we interpolate on animation. So input range goes, sorry, so input range goes, let me import interpolate. Uh, 
All right, so input range. We go from zero to half of the animation, it's up in the air, and from half to one, it goes back down. So output range, uh, zero, we do card weave, card eight times, let's say 1.5. Again, here, if you want the precise value, tri pen and paper and trigonometry, that's how you calculate the exact value. Um, this looks actually good. Let's see. So now we have the card translations here. So we know that translate y equals card translation at index. Translate. Uh, and we can add the rotation as well. So set uh card rotations at index to be again we have a fancy interpolate here so we go from at 0 0.5 from 0 to 35 degrees and then we go back to zero let's have a look so i select a card that would be um uh, here that would be minus. Okay, select a card. So it looks good, but now we need to update, of course, the Z index. So again, we're going to associate a Z index for each card. So card z indexes and so we have um, elevation for android which is card indexes at index and we have z index for iOS, so I can pass it here as parameter. So now, once we reach the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 threshold, we need to update the Z index, but we need to do it only once. So we're going to create an animation variable to set if we need to update the Z index or it has been updated already. So let's call it should update Z index. And we're going to set value to one should update Z index. So here we're going to add a condition, which is if the animation is greater or equal to zero five, and it should update. So and the Z index hasn't been updated yet, and should update index. We can set set should set the updating should update Z index, we set it to zero because we already updated the Z index and we're going to update the Z index. So card Z indexes of at index and we, ne we take the maximum. So the max value from uh, all the card Z index values and increment it to one. So we need to pass these and the max function because the max function in reanimated is only uh, takes only two arguments. We can use the one from we dash. We takes an arbitrary amount of arbitrary amount of arguments. It's equivalent essentially to do a reduce 
of the max function with uh, array t2 and I need to do add here. Thank you TypeScript for picking up this error for me. And once, sorry, here I am. So that looks good. And once the animation is done, we need to set should update that index to one. So when the clock is not running anymore, uh, we need to reset this value. Let's have a look. Okay, I tap, isn't that cool? Now let's do summer sunset, boom. And now you see what's missing is we need to animate also the rotate of the card at the bottom. So let's do it here. So for each card, which is not the selected card. So let's map, uh, let's first, so, okay. <laughs> So we're going to filter, so we're going to map all the cards except the one which is, not, which is selected. So we're going to do a filter on the cards. And then we want one to be rotated to uh, seven and a half uh, degrees and the next one to be minus seven and a half, seven and a half minus seven and a half. And in order to do that, we need to, okay, filter the selected card, but we also need to keep the real, uh, the absolute index of each card because then we know if it's, uh, uh, it needs to be um, um, incremented to, uh, uh, if it needs to be multiplied by minus one. Or, so I, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, here we hard coded the card indexes. So meaning here we really assume, even though, yeah, here we really assume that there, there are only three cards. Uh, but also I find it to be elegant Actually, we can rewrite this code to, to have no assumptions about the number of cards. Um, but you know what? Uh, let's do it. Yeah, let's, so let's map the card. So we have the card index uh, and the, sorry. So we have the card, oops. The index we map the index so we know the absolute index for each card we filter uh, all the cards except the one which has been selected uh, so we filter out the card which has been selected so selected card is different from index and then we can map so we have absolute index here and so we need we know that Oop. because here if i didn't keep absolute index by doing this this map here i would filter out the card i would have index zero but maybe index zero is actually the index of the card which is selected. So it wouldn't make sense to, to apply the transformation. So we do a set card rotation index at absolute index. And then we need also the actually the actual index in the sequence to know if we do need to do a times a minus one or one. So we rotate by from whatever is the value to 7.5 and according to the position, do a minus one. So if I modulo two equals zero, we do minus one or one. I might have some syntax error here. So 
so. Sorry, so set here it's a B interpolate of on animation. Perfect. And here, of course, it's not selected card, but it's index here. It's hard, you see, because there is really two different uh, layers, the one which is declared to the UI thread and the one we, which declares the animations. And then there is, I would say, a third one, which is uh, uh, React runtime. So it's hard sometimes to, to uh, not mix up all of these values. So we have index, which is a part of the declaration. We are going to have some index, which is a state. Uh, which is in the React state, the uh, um, selected card. We have selected card, which is uh, the selected card, but the animation value. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, so for instance, the selected card index exists in three layers, right? In the declaration, in the React state, and in the animation value. So that's why sometimes it's hard to, to not get uh, mixed up. And that's why like TypeScript is very helpful because you saw without me testing the code, I knew something was, was funky. So let's have a look. Boom. Cool, no? And you have in the back the cards that rotate if they need to in order to be visible. Kind of cool. I mean, you have always the one which was at the top that rotates. Um, which actually I could update this to be much simpler, but what I like about this is that it's independent of the number of cards you have. And we have here this part, which is dependent on the number of cards which are available, but which we could uh, easily refactor to, to be agnostic to the number of cards. So that, the, that's, I think that's it regarding the, the reanimated part. So now you see we need to actually set uh, the state, the selected card into the state and animate these uh, check marks. So we need to create a new state using hooks. So we're gonna have a selected card. So I'm calling it selected card state, could be called selected card and this one would be called selected card value. So you know like if you're dealing with a state value or an animation value. And then we are going to have set selected card state. So use state at initial index. Okay. So um, in where is my select card function? So here I can update the state as well. To index. And now if here I could, uh, if I only show the check mark if the card is selected, so selected card state equals index, then we show the check mark. So now you see it basically crashes kind of when we update the state and it's because when we update the state all these animations here all these animation values are redeclared so we're going to need to use uh, use memo in order to uh, safely so to um, the lifetime basically these animation values depend on the card cards property so if the cards property doesn't change, we don't touch the animation values. So this is what we're going to do with use memo. So for instance, can do it with one animation value. Oops. 
selected cards. We get it from use memo, which depends on cards. And we're going to return a, basically an object structure with all the animation values that we need. So for instance, selected cards. So exactly, oops, like this. And we need to do this for every animation values up. Oh, I should know how to, to do a multi cursor selection in Visual Studio. Please bear with me, or at least some good uh, search and replace, right? Ay, 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 ay. Sorry about that, guys. You deserve better <laughs> than me struggling like this, but should be over soon. Tuk, tuk, tuk. And I need now to also extract it here for each. Okay, sorry about that. We should be done now. Let's have a look. Yes. You see, now we have the value that lives in the state, the selected card that lives in the state and in the animation value. So last thing, just to not really important, but just to have fun with. Uh, so you see here, the way the check icon is displayed is a bit brutal and we could decide to animate using the transition API from reanimated. It's new, so let's have fun with it. Um, oops, sorry, in examples, transitions. Let's try this one. So I need these guys. And it's, I think, the view, it becomes a transitioning view. We need to set a reference, right? To, in, to call animate next transition. So I'm going to use a ref. Uh, yeah, container, and I'm gonna use use ref. Um, and we need to set, I think, a transition. So here, okay. So we have container So when we set here the new animate we have so dot current animate next transition and we need to declare our actual transition here. So we can do a uh, transition, I think it's in, interpolation, um, let me check, transition in, so type is going to be uh, fade. Or 
should we do it for out maybe so fade and let's do let's say like just to debug duration two seconds just to see if we see it Yes, so you see that works, right? It takes a lot of time for the two seconds for the button to disappear. So maybe now we can just set it to a very small value, like 100 milliseconds. And uh, yeah, I think it was, I mean, it just had a little bit of smoothness, but that was uh, us also like playing with the transition API. I mean, I think it was a cool example because we, you know, with the videos now, we, we really understand reanimated and we know how to build these things. Uh, um, we've reanimated quite well, but here we got to play with a lot of new stuff. So React Native uh, hooks and uh, the new transition API. So, and the result is really um, delightful, I would say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this example. I'm uh, looking forward to talk to you guys soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.